Hi, I'm Jim Oberst. Many artists avoid watercolor because they believe that it is impossible to make corrections to a completed painting. Although it's true that the best watercolors are painted in one go, in this slideshow I'll demonstrate how major corrections to watercolor paintings are possible. This is my photo reference for this painting, a country house in the English Midlands. I always begin with a simple value sketch to design the pattern of lights and darks in my painting. Here I plan to save the white of the house, to paint most of the rest of the house, field and road in mid-tones, and to place some darks in the background foliage around the house and just above the stone wall. I also decided to avoid so much green by painting the foliage behind the house and wall in fall colors. Here is my completed painting on my first try. There are several things wrong with this painting. First, I did not render the autumn foliage well. It looks more like a forest fire is bearing down on the house than an autumn foliage scene. Sticking with the summer foliage would have been more successful. In addition, I did not follow my value sketch. The house roof is darker than the background foliage. My first thought was just to trash this and repaint the painting, but then I decided to see if I could make these major corrections on the original painting. I started by applying masking tape under the roof edge, down the side of the house, and along the top of the far stone wall. Here is the painting after several scrubs with Mr. Clean Original Magic Eraser. This household cleaning pad which can be purchased in most supermarkets or hardware stores, can remove watercolor paint very effectively. It contains no chemicals, but achieves its results by the physical design of the pad. You simply wet the pad, squeeze it out so it's damp, and rub the paint off the paper. Note that some ghosts of tree trunks remain. That's because I originally scraped out the trunks with a credit card which slightly damaged the paper surface. It's possible to get the treated area quite white again, but that wasn't necessary here. It's clean enough to repaint the roof and the foliage over it. Here's the scrubbed painting, ready for a new roof and background foliage. First, I repainted the roof striving to keep it lighter in value than my first attempt. I also lightened the roof of the shed a bit by moistening it and lifting some paint off with a tissue. I repaired the orange bush and the green hedge near the front of the house, both of which had been trimmed by the masking tape. Finally, I repainted the background foliage in summer colors. I worked hard to vary the color and value of this foliage mass and also lightly indicated some trunks with scraping and positive painting. I was careful to make the foliage near the roof line darker than the roof. So you can see that even this sort of major change is possible in watercolor. As I said in the beginning, these paintings are best when completed in one go and left alone. But when disaster strikes, it's possible to make significant corrections to watercolor paintings. So, here's the original painting and the corrected one. Original. Corrected. I hope all your watercolor paintings are successful on the first go. Unfortunately, that's not likely for most of us. But as this slideshow indicates, it is possible to make changes, sometimes major changes, to improve your completed paintings. 